And we are back. <laughs> all right. Um, so that first half an hour flew by pretty quick. We didn't talk about the three-way at all. Uh, I could talk to people for four hours and not hit the topic that we're supposed to be talking about. So why, why don't we dive into that? Uh, before we do, I'll say the, the site that I'm on now, uh, I've had a box of these things at my house for a long time. Uh, when, uh, when Brad did it, I would, you know, he's one of my buddies. So I, I went out and got it right away and uh, I was cleaning my garage out actually after CSR and went, Holy shit, I got a whole box of these things. <laughs> so took them to site, cool. started using them. It's, uh, it, it, my first impression of it. I thought that it was paper. Uh, and, and when you take it out of that package and look at it, it's not paper. It's, it's a pretty serious, uh, pretty serious three-way that, that, that you're looking at there. Like, it's like no coat, uh, is kind of the yeah. best way that I would describe it. Yeah. It took us about, well, we're, we're still trying to make it even better. And I think you're talking Brad Hanna, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 He, he might've gave you some of the, the first one, uh, and we've evolved it even more. So okay. like you were saying, it took a long time to us to figure out the exact properties of this outer layer of paper and put perforations in it, these little slits, so it mm -hmm. it'll meld right into the uh, paper tape and the angles. And then the reinforcement, of course, pretty simple, but it holds that crisp line yeah. and covers up any broken boards or uh, and the adjustability, this extra flap here, so you can compensate for a little bit of uh misaligned framing you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you have those old three ways we should replace them for you <laughs> well you know i'll i'll uh those i'll take a look time. yeah because I, I i'll be i'll be interested to see if they are new. it is a, I, it is a it is a difference if you have this on the back then you got the newer ones basically uh, that says towards uh the drywall yeah 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 we, when I'll we first started we thought it would be intuitive but people were putting them in backwards and Holy they shit. still worked, but they weren't uh, having the, the best yeah. effect. If they hold it the wrong way, they kind of flex out a little bit. Well, but then your uh, your flap at the end would be upside down too, wouldn't it? Well, they could switch it around. Like that bevel. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, the bevel would be going the other way. Yeah, that, that's what I mean, yeah. So some people would put these in yes. first yeah, that would yeah. onto it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's showing very well. Anyhow. Anyway. I, I know we what you mean. Print that on there. <laughs> if anybody's wondering, yeah, maybe go buy one and take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it did take, uh, it took some time to get the right kind of paper um, composition that doesn't wrinkle up or expand and all that yep. stuff when it hits the water, right? That's what took time. And for tape, you can't use the same paper product that tape's made out of which is perfect it's, yeah it's way too thick i feel right or well, well no they got it sewed up you can't you can't buy that shit it's oh, to get, okay. but, yeah. but you know you know when we're when we're taping you put that paper tape you can't paint paper tape no it's totally different than drywall paper so we had to find the uh same properties as paper tape that when you get it wet, it doesn't stretch and rip so easily, like printer paper, for example, that'll warp all that. Right. So there's a lot of a lot of qualities that it had to have and still be paintable, like drywall paper. Is. You know. So yeah, because you don't you don't put any mud on the inside, so that paper has to be paintable as right. it is, right? So yeah. it took a while to to uh, we had to create our own type of formula with another guy to. You know someone who knows about that to get the right kind of paper formula it's a which took time custom it, paper yeah it, you can't just buy any of the anywhere or anything yeah it, it, it's very apparent when you open it up and start playing with it that there was some time put into that um yeah. it, it's just as you're using it you're like okay yeah this is pretty smooth <laughs> as, you know you, you never know until you get it in your hands and you start using it right it's uh I always, I always like trying new stuff and every once in a while you fall on your face with it. And then every once in a while you're like, this thing's, this thing's a big difference. Um, yeah. And building so many people have ideas how things should come together. We've all gotten blueprints where this lines up with this, but yep. when it actually comes to practical application, well, this wall and this wall, they, they don't fit together. because of, So you, 
does is need to make plate adjustments. Yeah. And because we've taped for so long, this this seemed like an intuitive thing to. Do you want to tell them maybe how you came up with it? Well, we've I've had this around for a while now. It's got to be ten years or more no that way. I've been working with it personally. I used okay. to sit on uh, at the table, you know, watching some stupid movie and and just using the paper cutter and fold press and everything and making okay. my own up, you know, because I figured, well, my time at home doing that, you know, um, which I couldn't make these at home anymore. You know, I couldn't make this quality of a product. What I but what I did find was what I did make, um, even though you still would have to go right into it, you know, and fill it all out, it still was saving time for guys getting their three ways done out. Right. And what kind of inspired it was a young guy on the job um, that was a relation of mine. He was just so incompetent. It was ridiculous. And I was hoping that I could make. That's the whole know, industry I, I, right now, by the way. <laughs> it's like fucking yeah. 80%. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was hoping to figure out some way that he could be uh, useful and, and, you know, not just be an expense. So that's when I, it hit me. Well, if I made up those three ways and he went around and installed them, at least it would help speed up for the other guys when they come in and, you know, do that. So it kind of evolved from there, you know, mm -hmm. um, now there's no comparison for this three way to that one, but it used to be, I would, I considered it my part of my trade secret because it helped with, uh, speeding up the time so much, you know, old school was all keep your secrets, keep your secret. Yeah. And, uh, and then when uh, I started working with Steve, uh, he's from a different generation. Yeah. And he was like, well, how come I can't go buy those? How come I don't see those? How come you're the only one using them? Blah, blah, blah. Because right? they're mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they, he they... said, well, he told me, he said, that's crazy. He says, well, you got to you gotta get those things marketed. Yeah. You got to get those things out there. So that's how, that's how we started to uh, move forward with that, you know. Yeah, I think that... Uh... I don't want to say the older generation, but the, in years past, uh, it was like a feast or famine. And that's across everything, right? Like it, you hear it with uh, literally everything, stand up comedy, everything, where you were either winning or you were losing, right? Uh, I think what we're developing now is a community of tapers, right? And if everybody's using these things and you're providing them to everybody, everybody is still winning. Uh, you know, we're, we're not all trying to kill each other for, for work here. There's a lot of work. There's no yeah. work shortage. <laughs> no, there's um, a labor skill shortage. I was going to say, I don't even think there's a labor shortage. I think there's a skill shortage, uh, big yeah. time because I, I, I see no lack of labor out there. Uh, I I'm seeing a huge lack of, of competence. Um, yes. yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where this part of comes in too. Totally. Because well, if you look at a compound tube, even right, that that's something that's cutting corners for a guy that's not proficient. That this is exactly like that. Um, it's got its place in everyone. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I, I've got them in my pack uh, now, and they're they're not going to go anywhere. They're going to be in that case that has my predator and all my stuff forever now. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, for guys that that aren't proficient at doing inside three ways that the, it's an absolute game changer for that kind of a guy yeah yeah i think even even your 50 year taper like mm -hmm. Roy, uh you know maybe what does it take uh, a few jobs to get good at a running bazooka totally so you're getting really precise getting that tape a few nicely. jobs how about a few years <laughs> <laughs> literally laid over in the corner yeah how much time do you save by well, that surprised me myself, like even though I knew in theory in my mind, yeah, of course, you're going to run your bazooka quicker because you don't have to worry about button up. You got five inches of play. That's yeah. huge. That means that, you know, a guy within a few weeks could run the bazooka, whereas to run it efficiently, as you know, being a taper, yeah. um, you're literally taking years to get that good. It doesn't happen overnight at all. And it's still not that fast, you know, to do it because you're still having to push the tape up, pull the tape, you know, that kind of stuff. So. I was surprised myself when I grabbed the bazooka and this was just a few weeks ago because the type of jobs I do, I don't do a lot of bazooka work mm -hmm. and I grabbed it and I ran all my angles and I didn't, you know, and I put it in my three ways. So I didn't, you know, after, so I didn't have to worry about that. And I was a little surprised to have the physical experience of, of running that bazooka without that 
I was like, whoa, that's fast. Because, I mean, I ran the bazooka for 30 years, you know. Yeah. So I, uh, I got pretty proficient at it. So now running it up, even for me, running it up, it's like, never mind the time you save throwing this in, which takes me, you know, not very many guys are going to do a really good three-way in four minutes. That's what it takes me. But that's right. five years of working with it, right? Most guys, I've heard guys say, it takes me half an hour. Uh, yeah, that seems a bit much, but um, but I get it. You know, it's going to yeah. take the average guy six, seven, up to ten minutes. You know, when they, and it's surprising too. Guys don't go around with a stopwatch to figure that out. But it's not just on your first coat of your tape wiping it out. It's the filling, the sanding, the filling, the sanding, the filling, the sanding. And the you know, and yeah. yeah. So you figure all that out. And this three way for me is one minute from install to paint. Yeah. Whereas another three way is four. So for me, it's four times faster right. to use this, but there's a, there's a little bit to this, like you're throwing it. So just, I don't know if this will help you or not help you, but this edge right here, right? When you're tape, when you install this, you want to get this edge here, not this, not this, not concerned about this, this edge here is tight to that drywall as you can. Right. So I take my knife and I press on that just, just on the other side of this, um, you know, this part, right, mm -hmm. of the bevel. So this side here, I just press, press, press. So that's down nice and tight. Yep. So then when you wipe this down, and you don't wipe it just on the edge. You know, you wipe it on a bit of an angle overlapping onto here as you wipe it down. That tapers it into the wall. Yep. That's what makes it so easy to just flash those corners. Because that's all you end up coating is just flashing here, here, here. And, um, you know, as, when you're taping, you want to see that tape buried, you know. Yeah. I like to always bury my tapes on first coat, make sure they're buried. But here, in skimming this, it's such a thin film. It was like, oh, is that going to be enough? But practicing it, yeah, I found actually skimming that out twice, it is enough. And you don't sand in here at all, so there's nothing to sand. You know, it's, up, it's, up, it's done. So, yeah, the time saving is just is just huge. It took us, when I was using them in condos, uh, using these things, <clears throat> the same crew, everything. When we were doing four units, you know, getting an apprentice to start running around with this, we were doing six in the same time we were doing four. That's the time savings. And that's sometimes hard for a taper to get his head around, but if they use a stopwatch, they'd see it's true. So so the price of them is uh, is not a problem for the amount of money and time that it actually saves you. And, the, and I found too, uh, as far as your reputation goes, I have yet to see a drywall supervisor or a contractor or a homeowner that didn't notice and and then like they're impressed. Oh, those are nice. Oh, that looks so good. And if you're a painter too, the f the first house I ever did with folded up three ways, uh, you know, the they weren't on market or nothing. You know, we were thinking about that. And the painter got a hold of my number, phoned me up and said, I don't know what you use those corners, but I want to know what it is I'm doing my house. And I yep. can't believe, you know, how easy and nice that was to cut in because that's a problem for a painter with all these rounded things and stuff oh, to make that look good. Yeah. It, so he it, was, it, it's, yeah, it, the painter was so impressed. He wanted them. So it, it, as a taper or a finisher, you're, you're then finishing someone's drywall work. So somebody has got shitty drywall work. You can still make it happen. It just takes a little bit more time. But as yeah. a painter, if you've got a shitty corner, good luck. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it, you can't fix that. Uh, you've just yeah. got to aesthetically make it look a certain way and and walk away yeah. from it and and you know unfortunately that that is what it is but the consistency that this product brings to the table is super intriguing where every single one you do is the same uh you know mm -hmm. even top tier finishers i bet you you walk through a big house like a 10,000 board foot house you're going to tell me there's not one fucked up three way Mm -hmm. not fucked up but i mean they're, yeah. they're not bang on every single one you know if you're using these things yeah. and then you get proficient at doing it um you know the consistency is key at least in this industry um you know when you say this is something that i'm providing is it is it every single time though and you know i think that's where it's starting to lack with people is you know they got pictures on their instagram of the three ways that they've done that's the best one in a house of 50 uh you yeah. know what i mean as a, as opposed to using this product every 50 is the same 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know. I think that's what's attractive to me. The other part of it is when I have guys on site, I've got them spotting screws, I've got them wiping behind the bazooka, that kind of thing. And then you sit around and go, okay, what do I have them do now that they're not going to screw me tomorrow? Uh, this is another one yeah. of those things where it's like, go put these in. You can close your eyes and do it, and you're probably real close to, <laughs> you know, yeah. doing it correctly. Um, the other thing I liked about it was if that corner's all chewed up, it doesn't matter. You just put that yeah. in there and, and it creates that corner because it's rigid. So that, yeah, yeah it it, it's, uh, like I, I, I think it does. Uh, I definitely yeah. does with the scale of, of things that I'm doing. Cause I'm not banging out a 10,000 board foot house every week. Like guys like Josh and, and Cam, right. I'm doing, you know, like uh, this 6,000 board foot house. Now it's in my spare time, but I've taken a month. Uh, you know, now I calculated out how many hours I've been. It's probably a 60 hour week, something like that. Um, but I mean, what I'm doing in two, three hours at a time, four hours at a time, it's, uh, you know, you, you, the real estate that I'm putting out, I'm way more excited about the quality at the end of the day than I am throwing things out there. And, and it's products like this, that, that do that. Um, you know, monster homes have, have so many three ways and that's, mm-hmm. that's easily 25% of your time and work and skill and it just knocks all that out of it and, you know you can finish an entire job with a pen and knife and yep. that's going to take a real long time and <laughs> some great tools and still more innovation by Can-Am, Columbia, North Star, the list goes on and on of rollers, flushers, uh, pneumatic tubes that are pumping mud out uh, yeah. airless and but there's not really any special tool for that corner that is no. pure skill yeah. and this still doesn't take away anybody's skill you still need to have some skill to put this in but the, the consistent product and the, the speed that you're gonna uh, get proficient at it and have yeah. it done is yeah well this is a game changer in a way that you haven't seen in drywall you know since i started since I started, all the tools are basically the same. You know, you just get more types of trials, more types of flushers, more all that stuff. Nobody's ever um, come up with an actual game changer. I remember in Alberta, it was a changer when uh, paper beads started. And, oh, and Yeah, and I actually started that trend back then too because I went into a guy's uh, drywaller supplier's warehouse looking at stuff and he had this box of paper beads. And it was so old, it had gone yellow, you know, the box. And I said, what's that? He said, that's paper bead. He says, I, I said, uh, well, you know, I, you know I, I, I'll, I'll try it. Throw it on my thing. He says, just take it. He says, nobody buys this stuff ever. Yeah, this, nobody wants forever. this shit. And then and now everybody yeah. loves it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, oh, I love this block is a beautiful product. So I, yeah. you know, back in, in Alberta, though, you have to actually put your boards, you know, tight. Yeah, they're you touching. can't have these gaps. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be like this. If, if not, the border comes back on his own time to fix it because they use paper bead there now. And you need that butted to overlap. That's one of the reasons you can't use it so much in Ontario is because the boards are, you know, all over the place. You need a wider kind of a thing. But when I, when I, the first time I got that thing and I wasn't very long of throwing it on in the house by hand and wiping it, that we got a skateboard, took it apart and put the wheels onto uh, some bolts on angle iron. So we could roll it on, you know, get out of here. And, yeah, okay. uh, and we started rolling on the bead. My material bill dropped by 30%. Wow. From, from filling big, heavy metal beads to that paper bead. Cause you could just about do it with a knife. I, I was shocked at my material cost difference. And, and uh, it, not enough yeah. people are tracking things like that. You guys had software or something that you started, didn't you? Ah, stopwatch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that too. But yeah, so many people are, are led with their emotions and not the facts. I'm Absolutely. so fast at this, and this took me no time at all. And when you actually find things, it starts to get the facts. You talk about calculators. When I was a young guy, the first handheld calculator was eight pounds. They called it handheld. It was like this. You know? Yeah. It came, it came with a <laughs> came with a neck strap. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, so we're getting awful close to another break here. I, if, if you've got the time, I'd like maybe on the, we could just do like a quick third segment and you can walk me through the whole process of installing these things. Is that okay? Sure. It's fine. Sure. Yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be right back with that. I think that's probably going to be the best uh, part. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back. 